DP600 or DP700? Are you a bit confused which MOXT fabric exam you should take and what are the key differences between these two exams? Stick around because I'm going to break down the key differences and give you my thoughts on which exam might be right for you. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Max fabric and Azure related topics. And today we're diving into one very hot topic that is DP600 versus DP700. Let's start with the basics. The DP600 is all about implementing analytic solutions using Max fabric, while the DP700 focuses on implementing data engineering solutions using Max fabric. Now you might be thinking, Alexi, this sounds pretty similar, and you're not wrong, and there is a lot of overlap between these two exams, but trust me, there are some key differences that we need to talk about. The DP600 is aimed at analytics engineers. These are the people who are all about designing and creating those enterprise scales data analytics solutions. On the flip side, the DP700 is targeting data engineers. These are the people who are very into data pipelines, loading patterns, data architectures and orchestration processes. Let's try to highlight the key differences in the high-level scope of these two exams by using an architectural diagram. Let's imagine that we have a MySQL database, SAP, and an Azure Blob Storage as our data sources for our data solutions that we are building using Max Fabric. Then on the fabric side, we have our medallion architecture and our data stores. We have a lake house as our bronze and silver layer data store, and then a data warehouse as our gold layer data store. Next, we could use some data flows to ingest some data out from our MySQL database and write it to our bronze layer. Then for the SAP, we could use data pipelines to fetch out data from that system to our lake house. And to the Azure Blob Storage, we can use the power of data virtualization and use a shortcut to get that data available to our bronze layer without actually moving it. Then we could use a notebook and process the data from the bronze layer to the silver layer. After that, we can process the data even more using a data flow and write it to our data warehouse that acts as a gold layer in our architecture. After that, we could have a semantic model on top of our data warehouse and then use Power BI read that data for reporting. Then we could make those reports available to business users to see and use. In a nutshell, this is the overall scope of the DP600 exam, and in this picture I have more or less the most important fabric tools that are covered in the exam like lake houses, data warehouses, notebooks, data pipelines, data follows, shortcuts, semantic models, and Power BI. And as we can see, this exam covers pretty much how to build end-to-end -end analytic solutions using Max Fabric. Your next question probably is, how does the DP700 exam then differ from this? Well, let's cover that. Since there are more data engineering tools in Fabric that are not covered in the DP600 exam, let's continue by adding few more sources to our picture. Let's have some IoT sensors and an Azure SQL database. From our IoT sensor, we want to ingest data near real-time to Fabric, and that we can achieve, for example, using an event stream and a KQL database. What comes to our Azure SQL database we can mirror it using Fabric's database mirroring capabilities and have that data available in Fabric near real time as well. After we have integrated both of these new sources to Fabric, we can use tools like notebooks and data flows to process data forward. And now we can outline the scope of DP700 exam. Basically, this exam has a lot of overlap with DP600 exam, but it excludes semantic models and Power BI related things and covers wider section of data engineering topics like streaming data and database mirroring. Also, I have to note that both of these exams cover some general topics related to Fabric's access control, administration and version control, etc. that are not seen in this picture. But basically, if you're more into and interested in end-to-end -end data analytics, then DP600 could be a better option for you. And on the other hand, if you see yourself more as a data engineer that doesn't want to mess with the reporting side of things, then DP700 could be the exam for you. Of course, if you really want to shine with your expertise, why not do both of these exams since they both have a lot of overlapping content in their study materials already. 
Next, let's check out what are the differences in programming languages that you need to be familiar with each exam. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Maxed Fabric content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the programming languages. In both of these exams, you need to know the basics of few programming languages. The common thing in the both exams is that you need to know the basics of SQL, since both exams ask you SQL-related questions. Another programming language that is used in both exams is Python, or more specifically PySpark, that is probably the most common language used in the notebook development, that is in the scope of both exams. For the DP600 exam, you need to be also familiar with the DAX language that is used in Power BI. Since Power BI is out of scope for DP700 exam, DAX is not needed for that exam. However, DP700 replaces DAX with KQL or Custo query language that is used to query KQL databases in Fabric. KQL and KQL databases are out of scope for DP600, and that's why KQL is not needed for that exam. Good thing to note is that over time the scope of Microsoft certification exams could change a bit, but this is the current setup we have with those exams. Also, I want to note that at the time of recording this video, DP700 is just coming out as beta exam. So if you're watching this video right after I release this, I would recommend first starting with DP600 and then doing DP700 after it has been released. If you'd like to have an efficient study plan for DP600 exam, check out this video next, where I cover hot tips for getting DP600 batch as fast as possible. Also, these tips are very much applicable to DP700 exam as well. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in that video.